How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the HowTo Guy123 here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to install an NVMe SSD into any computer that does not have an M.2 NVMe slot. To begin, you'll need to purchase an NVMe to PCIe adapter. For this tutorial, I'll be using this Ugreen NVMe to PCIe adapter that I purchased off Amazon for about $16 Canadian. This adapter supports PCIe Gen 4 and PCIe x16, x8, and x4 slots. There are many different adapters that you can choose on Amazon, and realistically, any one you choose should work just fine. To install the SSD into the adapter, slide the clamp onto the end of the SSD. Make sure that the flat side of the clamp is facing downwards. Next, insert the SSD into the M.2 socket on the adapter. Now flip over the adapter to the back and screw in the SSD from the bottom to secure it. Now we'll need to place a thermal pad onto the SSD. This Ugreen NVMe to PCIe adapter included two thermal pads. One is thicker than the other. We're going to want to use the thinner one. Peel off the film from both sides of the thermal pad and place it on top of the SSD. Now place the heatsink on top of the SSD and secure it with two screws. We can now install the adapter into our PC. Shut down the computer and turn off the power supply by flipping its switch. Then unplug your computer. The computer that I'm working on in this video does not have a switch on the back of the power supply, so I'm just going to unplug it. I then recommend pressing the power button for a few seconds just to discharge any electricity that might be lingering in the components. Next, screw off and remove your PC's side panel. Now locate an available PCIe slot on your motherboard. For this example, I'm going to install the SSD into the single PCIe x16 slot on my motherboard. Open the latch at the end of the socket. Line up the notches on the adapter with the socket, then firmly slide the adapter into the PCIe socket until it clicks into place. The adapter is now installed, and we can place the side panel back on our PC. Now you can reconnect all of your cables to the back of the computer, and flip the switch on the back of the power supply if necessary. Now that our SSD is installed into our computer, we can install Windows onto it. The process of installing Windows is exactly the same as installing Windows on any other SSD or hard drive, so I might skip over a few details in this video. You will need to create and boot to a Windows Install USB. Once your Windows bootable Install USB has been created, plug it into the computer which you installed your SSD in, and turn it on. Once on the boot screen, press the key on your keyboard which will open up your computer's boot menu. The boot menu key can vary between different computers, but on the computer that I'm working on in this video, I can open up the boot menu with the F12 key. My computer is showing this hard disk drive failure error because I don't have any SATA drives connected to my computer, and it currently does not recognize our NVMe SSD, but I can just press F1 to continue into the boot menu. I'll then use the arrow keys on the keyboard to select the USB which contains Windows and press enter to boot into the Windows installer. In this video, I'll be installing Windows 10 onto my SSD, but if you will be installing Windows 11, you'll need to bypass a hardware check if your computer doesn't meet its minimum requirements. Simply follow the prompts to install Windows. The only important thing to keep note of here is that when asked what type of installation do you want, choose custom, and then you'll see a list of drives that you can install Windows onto. Your SSD should be shown in the list here. Here, Windows recognizes the 500GB NVMe SSD that I installed earlier. Make sure that your SSD is highlighted, then click next to begin installing Windows. Since we are installing Windows to an NVMe SSD, the install should be fairly quick. In this case, Windows took less than 5 minutes to install. 
Once Windows is done installing, it will ask you to restart your computer. However, you might not be able to boot into Windows yet. This is because many older computers do not support booting to PCIe. On some computers, you may just need to enable CSM in the BIOS or do a BIOS update, so you're going to want to do some research to see if or how your computer can boot to PCIe. If you're using a computer that can't boot to PCIe at all, the easiest way to get around this would to first boot to a USB with a bootloader that has a driver that can detect our SSD, then boot to Windows from there. In this video, we'll be using the Clover bootloader. I'll leave the link to download Clover in the description below. Once on the GitHub page, find the latest version and download the clover x64.iso.7zip file. I'm going to save the file onto my desktop for easy access. We also need to download Rufus to install Clover onto our USB and make it bootable. I will also leave a link in the description below to download Rufus. Once on the download page, scroll down and download the latest version of Rufus. I will also save it to the desktop. We will now need to extract Clover. Right click on it and choose Extract All. Click Extract and a folder will appear on the desktop. Open up the folder and you'll see a Clover ISO file inside. Now open up Rufus. And under device, choose the USB flash drive you want to install Clover on. The Clover bootloader is very small. I recommend installing Clover to the smallest USB flash drive that you can find that's at least 1GB in size. Since the USB will need to be connected to our computer at all times in order to boot to our SSD, it's best to use a throwaway USB you don't use very often. Now click the select button and browse your PC for the Clover ISO file we downloaded earlier. Under partition scheme, most of the time you will want to keep this as GPT. The GPT option is for computers with a newer style UEFI BIOS. Choose MBR for older computers with a legacy BIOS. Most computers made within the last 10 to 12 years support UEFI. Make sure that the file system is set as FAT32, then click start to begin creating your Clover bootable USB. When asked, choose to write in ISO image mode. You will then get a warning stating that all the data on this USB will be erased. Click on OK to continue. Once Rufus has finished creating your Clover bootable USB, we can close out of it. Now open up the file explorer and navigate to your Clover USB. Open up the EFI folder, then Clover, Drivers, and finally open up the off folder. Look for the mvm express dxe.efi file and copy it. This is the driver which will allow Clover to locate our NVMe SSD on boot. Go back one folder and open up the uefi folder and paste the mvm express dxe.efi file inside. Once you've done that, go back one folder again and open up the bios folder. And here also paste the file. We are now ready to boot to our SSD with Clover. Plug in your Clover bootable USB into the computer in which you installed your NVMe to PCIe adapter. As I previously mentioned, this USB will need to stay connected to your computer in order to boot to your SSD. Turn on the PC and boot to the BIOS. On my computer, to open up the BIOS, I can press the F2 key on my keyboard while on the boot screen. Once in the BIOS, you'll need to set your Clover bootable USB as your first boot device in the boot priority. This is so that the computer will always boot to the Clover bootloader. This process can vary between different BIOSes, but in my case, I just need to use the arrow keys to navigate to the boot tab and go down to where it says first boot device and set this to my USB with the enter key. Now that I've done that, I can navigate to the exit tab and choose save changes and reset. My computer will now restart and boot into the Clover bootloader. I'm still going to get the hard disk failure error as I have no SATA drives connected to my PC. I will connect a SATA SSD after I've set up Windows to remove the error and for extra storage. Once your computer restarts, it will boot into the Clover bootloader. 
presenter on the boot Microsoft EFI, boot from EFI option, or wait out the 5 second countdown to boot into Windows running off of your NVMe SSD. You'll then be brought to the Windows setup, and once you've completed the setup, you'll be brought to the desktop. I've just went ahead and connected an extra SATA SSD to my computer, so I will no longer get the hard disk drive failure error when I boot my PC. If we open up Device Manager, and look under disk drives, this Samsung MZVOB is my NVMe SSD, and if we go down to storage controllers, we have a standard NVM Express controller installed and working in our computer. I've now shut down my computer, and if I go ahead and turn it back on, it will still boot into the Clover bootloader as long as we have the bootable USB connected to our computer. And once I select the SSD, it will boot to Windows extremely fast. And that's all there is to installing an NVMe SSD into any computer without an M.2 NVMe slot. If this video helped, please leave a like, if it didn't leave a dislike, and I'll see you guys in the next one.